Hello there everybody and welcome! In this video I want to share 7 things about Against the Storm that will help you tremendously to get started in this game. Against the Storm is a wonderful survival roguelite game and it is very special in everything it does. Therefore it can be a little bit overwhelming and it can be a little bit hard to get into it, but fret not, these things will help you out a lot. So let's get started with the very first thing. You gotta play for a victory here. Your goal is always to fill this reputation bar and win the map. Unlike other city builder games that have a similar vibe, this game does not know a stable situation. This game tries to kill you non-stop. Basically, the longer the year go, the years pass by, you will ultimately lose because of that. If you have not enough achievements, the Queen's Impatience will kill you. If you use up too many resources because you take too long, your fields will grow empty. And there are so many pressuring factors about the game and how it's tailored that I need to emphasize that you're not building a settlement that will thrive forever. You build a settlement that will last through the cycle, get their job done, and then get, well, I guess they will go home when the cycle ends, so it really fits also into the narrative. But this was something that I needed to get my head wrapped around when I started out, because it's a very different approach than other games of the genre. Number two brings me to another point, don't give up. Whatever happens in this game, however dire the situation might be, how many people might leave your colony, whatever, play as long as you can because this game rewards you for holding out as long as you can the all the meta currency that gives you upgrades you get more of it the longer you last and the more you achieve of your task partial successes do count therefore don't toss your game into the bin only because you feel like it's pretty much lost after 50 percent of the time first of all you might be wrong because something unexpected might be behind that next glade or whatever and also you get rewarded for holding out as long as you can therefore try it out and try to win during that try to take risks if you know that you've already lost might might as well try something out that you never did before looking at these really nasty glades out there at the corner of the map come on where are you here these you know these bad boys never opened one that's a good opportunity whatever might be the case don't 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 give up and just keep playing. Everything will be fine. There's more than enough things that you can try on. Number three. This game pressures you a lot with things that you can choose from. Being it the orders that define your quest, so to say, for the remainder of the run, or your buildings that you can draft, all these things exert a certain type of pressure. But there's one thing to note. You only need to choose when you want to choose, especially with these drafts here. It often happens to me that I look at these buildings and I don't know yet which one will be best suited. So I keep that, delay it, and then open a few glades and check out what resources I will find there. This often helps me to decide what kind of building is more useful. You know, maybe you find a couple of extra fertile soil patches, all of a sudden a farm is very, very interesting, or all of the buildings that can process things that grow on the fields. Whatever might be the case, you have no time pressure in choosing these, although sometimes you will want to select to see what is behind that, because all of the selections are kind of like not your thing. Also, it's worth mentioning that when you opened up one of these orders, you cannot open up the other ones, but it's the same thing here. If you are not sure which one of these objectives will suit to your game plan best, you can delay them, unless you have a timed order, but that's a different kind of story. No beginner will worry about timed orders. Either way, here you can also check out the environs and check out if this or that is more your kind of deal. But keep in mind that these are a little bit more strict, you gotta select to pick up the next one, but there is again really no pressure. If you are insecure, insecure which one you want to pick here, you also have the freedom of choice unless you are, uh, and as long as you are okay with the fact that you can't see the other packages. But summary of this point, don't choose because only because you feel like you have to choose. Always choose because you feel like this is a good choice. The more you get closer to this goal, the more successful you will be in this game. So, number four, processed food. 
Processed food is the king of the early game achievements. You want to get yourself stuff like biscuits, pie, basically everything which takes the stuff that you collect out on the fields, like insects and berries and whatnot, and processes them into some sophisticated type of food. This has two major advantages. First of all, advanced food always yields more food than the original raw food. It is always a loss to eat raw food. And the other benefit behind that is that processed food also makes your people happier. So uh, you, you kill two birds with one stone. You will also find out that it's nigh impossible to feed a colony just with raw foods alone. The efficiency is just not getting there. You need processed food, and the faster you get a cycle of production, the ideal thing are fields and industry processing these goods, but also foraged goods processed into processed food are really, really game-breaking, and you will notice how much happier your people are, and the, the how much easier it'll get to last through the storms. And also, your food stockpiles will look nicely. Number five. Fuel and building materials are just the next thing that I want to address. They are, together with processed food, the three main pillars of your early game development. You will want to have here again more sophisticated fuel wood is okay if you don't have anything else but coal is always superior because it is just way more efficient so here again the same rule applies if you can't get yourself a kiln it is always more effective to fire the coal rather than the wood because of the uh, longer burning efficiency and all those things i did the math i came up with the conclusion that at a high efficiency, coal always beats wood in terms of uh, yields. That means you want to get these things, or in the worst case, you just want to have a huge wood stockpile. Either way, mind these things. You will need fuel at large amounts. It's one of the most important things. And after that, you want to check on out that you get yourself fabric, bricks, and planks produced in a meaningful and good manner. These things, as you, if you have processed food, fuel and building materials under control, you basically already won 50% of the game because these are the main things that your colony will thrive upon. Now, I want to talk about in number six about the upgrades from the meta currency that I personally think you should go for first because they have the hugest impact on your gameplay and the other things are more like specialization things. So let's go over them. First of all, consumption control. Consumption control, if you unlock that, you can just forbid the people to eat the raw food. This makes everything so much better. It also offers some other nifty little tools. You can select that the humans get to eat that and the beavers get to eat that. These are a little bit more complicated, but the raw food control is amazing and it helps you a, a lot in making your colony a lot more efficient. It's also very low in the ladder. Then the other point is Unlock the things that give you more choices when you draft, be it cornerstones or be it uh, buildings. These are also increasing your victory chances massively, as you just have more tools to choose from. And that means more adaptability, and more adaptability means a higher victory rate. End of the line. The next thing, trading. Unlock trade routes ASAP, as these are a wonderful way to get yourself amber in a reliable way. Trade routes are together with some cornerstones, even a viable victory strategy. Either way, I found it really, really valuable to be able to sell off my overproductions in trade routes, therefore really go for it, it's really, really good. Then the hearth upgrade. You can select an upgrade which allows you to unlock the neighborhood upgrade, which means you can... Uh, or is it the uh, encampment? I can't remember which one it was, how it was called again, but the one upgrade that allows you to go for, I think it's this one, yeah, that allows you to go for plus two resolve if you manage to set up a couple of houses and a couple of decorations. Get that upgrade ASAP, as it is a real big spike in terms of efficiency. It'll make every one of your ancient hearths be more effective than they were before for a very, very low investment. The neighborhood and district upgrades are pretty costly, 
They really uh, require a lot of buildings as well, but the encampment upgrade is really cheap. So go and unlock that as quick as possible. And last but not least, here I haven't unlocked it yet, housing. Racial housing is amazing as it is a cheap way to make your people happier by just investing some building resources. Done. It's really good as it yields a steady path that you can fit onto any strategy. It's just a bit more points for your happiness and therefore it's worth unlocking racial housing. So number seven, the last point here that requires me to go into the encyclopedia and I want to talk as the last thing about luxury buildings or well, I call them luxury buildings. All these things that consume luxury goods. These will be the last point on your development list. Only go for these if you have the three things, processed food, fuel and building materials under control and then go for them. Select whatever fits to your species but don't go for more than one or maximum two of these um, luxury goods when you're new to the game and you don't have access to all the different tools that will make you more productive. These things are insanely hungry. So going for the requirements like here, training gear and incense is all that you want to burden up your colony with at the beginning. Later you get some options, but sometimes it's still smarter to just focus onto one or two luxury goods tops because you can get, uh, you will achieve way less if they don't get fueled regularly. But if they get fueled regularly, they are basically a, a victory a victory strategy on their own, especially in lower difficulties. Either way, these also, offer really good passive effects and they should be your goal and you should always have that like at your horizon once i'm done with setting up the basics i'm looking for a really nice plan hall or whatever comes to your mind you will find whatever um, is good for you there and focus that and win the game with it and that's that these are the basics of course the game is way more complex than that and the video here oversimplifies a couple of things i will be doing more uh, videos about this feel free to ask away in the comment section or add in other good things that you feel like i should have included because i forgot them i really am looking forward to that Leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you enjoyed, and of course, check out the description box down there. I got a Discord where you will find like-minded gamers, and I'd be very happy to have a chat with you. And of course, there's also Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee. Check them out if you want to support the channel, I'd be very, very happy. And a big, big thanks to all of you who already did. And of course, a big, big thanks to you watching this video, because that means you've been through the ads, you've been through the entire video, and I appreciate it. Have a great day. See you there.